Hi, in this video, we're looking at this question. What is stoichiometry? Uh, it's kind of a strange name. Stoichiometry essentially is just looking at ratios. If you're really good at baking or cooking, or at least taking a recipe and modifying it to uh, double it or triple it, or maybe even cut it in half, then what you're doing is stoichiometry. Let's start with this. Um, here's a, uh, a fake hamburger. It's actually a cheeseburger, it looks like, with ketchup on it. And so if you look at the ingredients for this, we need two buns, we need a burger patty, a slice of cheese, and let's say two packets of ketchup. So those are the ingredients to make one burger. If I wanted to make two burgers, I'd have to double all of my ingredients. Or maybe, let's say, I only had one ketchup packet. Well, this is going to be strange, but I could really, as long as I'm following the recipe, I could really only make half of a burger with that one ketchup packet. I'll have some of the other stuff left over, but that's going to kind of limit how many burgers, according to this exact recipe, I can make. And so if this all makes sense to you, this is stoichiometry. That's it. So let me give you a chemistry example then of what stoichiometry looks like. If I had this equation, this is N2 nitrogen gas plus uh, three moles of H2 or hydrogen gas making uh, two moles of NH3, which is ammonia. Um, in this scenario here, if you look at kind of the balanced equation as a recipe, uh, you can see where we can try to predict how much of a substance we might make, uh, knowing how much of a reactant we're putting into this. Let me, let me show you this visually. N2 means you have one nitrogen molecule, and each one of those molecules has two nitrogen atoms. The three in front of H2 means that you have three separate and distinct H2 molecules. So uh, one molecule of H2 would just be one of these, and then we've got three of them, and that's what that three means. And so in our product side, we're not just making one NH3, we're making two of them. But let's look at the relationships between nitrogen and hydrogen just as a starting point. For every one nitrogen molecule, I need three hydrogen molecules in order to have a complete reaction making two molecules of NH3. So if I had two N2 molecules, I would need six H2 molecules to go with it. This is just kind of ramping up the proportion between the two reactants. Or here's another way to look at this. If I reacted three molecules of H2, I could make two molecules of NH3. What if I reacted nine molecules of H2? I could make up to six molecules of NH3. So it's just like adjusting the quantities in a recipe. Uh, in fact, a balanced equation is a recipe. It's a recipe for a chemical reaction. Um, now, I'm using when I'm looking at this I'm, I'm equation to figure out the proportions between these things, I'm using just the coefficients in the front of the balanced equation. Here would be a one. And so the ratio between these substances is what we call a molar ratio. It's the proportional relationship that exists between substances in a balanced chemical equation. And so really the molar ratio just relies on having a correctly balanced equation and then just looking at the coefficients in the front of the equation. So let's do some example problems with this. What if I asked you this question? If one mole of nitrogen reacts, how many moles of hydrogen react with it? Well, uh, it may be easy to see that I have a coefficient of one in front of N2, and that's exactly what this problem describes, one mole of nitrogen. Well, that's what this represents. So I automatically know just by looking at this that I'm gonna have to have three moles of hydrogen to go with it. But let me set this up. And like I said, this may seem silly to you, um, but the number isn't, as always, isn't always as easy as just one here. So what if I had uh, a dimensional analysis or a factor label method set up going? I would write one mole of N2, and then I'm going to multiply by the molar ratio that exists between N2 and H2. I want moles of N2 to cancel, so the one from the coefficient there goes here, one mole of N2 on the bottom, and then three moles of H2 goes on the top. Okay, so now this math, one times three over one is three. So you can see it works even for the simple ones. It'll work and you'll be thankful that it works for the more difficult ones. So let's do another example. This says if two moles of nitrogen react, how many moles of hydrogen react with it? Now again, humor me on this one you may be able to see that we just doubled the number of moles of nitrogen, so we can just double the moles of hydrogen that would have to go with it. Um, but I'll set this up again just so you get familiar with this. Two moles of nitrogen 
I would again multiply by the molar ratio that exists between the two substances. This question is asking about nitrogen and hydrogen. And so I want one mole of nitrogen to be on the bottom of my ratio. That's that coefficient from the equation. And then on the top, I want three moles of H2. And so two times three over one is six. Six moles of H2. Now, like I said, these are just basic starting examples. Uh, it may get more difficult. In fact, it will get more difficult. And the idea of setting it up this way is going to help you when it becomes more challenging. So let's do another example. This says 0.6 moles of H2 can produce how many moles of NH3? So we always want to start with what we're given. So 0.6 moles H2. And I want to multiply by a molar ratio because I'm comparing mole amounts of two different substances that exist in a balanced equation. Moles of H2, in this case, three moles of H2, should go on the bottom. And now this is asking about something different. It's asking about the product this time. Uh, this is a three to two ratio. So I have two moles of NH3 on the top. So 0.6 times two over three, well, 0 0.6 times 2 is 1.2, divided by 3 is 0.4. So I would be able to produce 0.4 moles of NH3. Now you can maybe see a natural extension to this. If I'm dealing with moles and we don't often put mole amounts on a scale, we usually put mass amounts on a scale, um, you can see a natural extension to this is, okay, well, what mass of NH3 is 0.4 moles? So that's it. That's a quick introduction to stoichiometry. It's very similar to multiplying or dividing a recipe. In the end, uh, the balanced equation is laying out proportions between your reactants and your products. And stoichiometric calculations are just ones that have you predicting what amounts uh, might be needed for a reaction or might come out of a reaction. Thank you.